Hey, it might just be me because I'm a nerd, but today OpenAI released the ChatGPT API, meaning that you can now have ChatGPT in your console. This is absolutely amazing. That means that the video I made last time about how you can have ChatGPT in your console is completely off. It's just OpenAI. And now you have the full-blown ChatGPT API in your PowerShell console, and that is just great. So now you can have a conversation with OpenAI, and it's just, yeah, it's just amazing. So let me show you how to quickly do this. It's going to be great. Okay, so I have this repo right here that I created, the OpenAI PowerShell wrapper. So I added another function to it, which is start chat GPT. And what this does is basically does what you think it does. It starts a chat GPT uh, function. So let's look quickly at it uh, before we start using it. So you understand what is happening. So basically we create, a, we have to put our OpenAI API key. If you don't know how to do that, you can go see my previous video about how to do that. So. Now we have the function. We're going to put our key. We're going to set the key as a key. This is the URL to use where we call the API. Then we create a body object. And if you noticed, if you've seen the previous video about OpenAI, this one is much more simple. We're using the GPT 3.5 Turbo model. And we have to do a list of messages. So we're going to pass it a list of messages. The first one is the system one which uh, from my understanding is the one that describes what the chat GPT conversation is going to be like. It's optional, but I did it this way anyway. Then we have a header, which is the authorization with our API key. And now we have a, a loop where it just keeps asking, just like chat GPT. Uh, so we're going to read host. We're going to do a prompt just so that you know where to type. We're going to add this message as a user role to this messages here, right here. So in our body, then we're going to convert that to a JSON so that, you know, the API can read it. We're going to pass that to our URL right here. Then we're going to get the response, right? We're going to get the content, the message. If you look at the API documentation right here, the message looks like this, the response. So we have an object, we have cho choices, and here we only have one choice, zero. And this is the message that we get. So as you can see, it's the same as what the message we're passing, role assistant. So that's chat GPT and the content. So. So we're going to get the choices. We're going to get the the message and we're going to write this out. I chose a different color, which is green. Unfortunately, in my Mac terminal, green is the default color, but whatever. And then we just separate it so that it's clearer to see what it is. And then we uh, add, the, add that message right here to the body of messages so that it keeps track of the conversation. And yeah, and that's basically how it works. You're just gonna you if you want you can change the content here to you are a nice assistant you're helpful whatever i think this describes the tone that the assistant is going to give so what you do is you copy this function right here with your api key and then you can say code profile it's going to open your profile and you paste it in there Right, you paste that in here, and now you have your own chat GPT. So let's give it a shot in my terminal. So start chat GPT. All right. Um, just to show you, says hi, Caroline. Yes, you're talking to ChatGPT. How may I assist you? And if I say, what's my name? Just so you see that it will remember the conversation. Um, what's your name? 
and there you go. So there we go. So now you can have conversation. So uh, let's say, how uh, do I get And there we go. So now it gives you, it's kind of weird that it gives it to you like this, but uh, no, there we go. It has the first one. So there, the clipboard, it gives you all the information that ChatGPT uh, would give you. So super simple, ChatGPT in your PowerShell console. I'm sure there will be a module for that soon. I like to have it in my profile and I'd like to have it not as a module, but that's that's what I do. That's how I do it. Um, I highly recommend that you don't import my function, but that you write it yourself using the documentation so that you get more practice into how to actually use APIs. You don't have to, but I recommend it.